This is our third teaching for Judaism 101, and please don't miss our first and second lessons. We will talk in this video about the calendar, days and weeks, holidays, high holidays, and modern holidays. Let's start with the Jewish calendar. In Hebrew, it is called Haluak Haibri, and is a lunar solar predominantly for Jewish religious observances. It determines the dates for Jewish holidays, Bible readings, Torah portions, and for other ceremonial uses. In the land of Israel, the Hebrew calendar is used to provide a time frame for agriculture and for civil purposes. The present Jewish calendar is the product of evolution, including a Babylonian influence. The Hebrew lunar year has 354 days instead of 365 making every year shorter than the solar year or Gregorian calendar. Therefore, the Jewish calendar added one month every two or three years to correct for the difference between 12 lunar months and the solar year. The year in which it was added was based on observation of natural agriculture-related events in ancient Israel. This way ensures that Passover remains to be a spring festival Pentecost, a harvest time, and tabernacles during the fall. The ancient Israelites have a religious and civil calendar. The civil calendar, or secular, that begins on fall at the Feast of Trumpets and Tabernacles is the official calendar for kings, childbirth, and contracts. The sacred calendar that begins on spring at the Feast of Passover is used for computing the dates of religious feasts and festivals. It is based on the lunar cycle, not the solar cycle, used in modern calendar. Here is the sacred calendar, the number of days per month, and the modern day or Gregorian calendar equivalent. The next lesson is day and hours. The Jewish day is of no fixed length. It is based on the rabbinic interpretation of Genesis 1.5 and also verse 8, 13, 19, 23, 31 that says, There was evening and there was morning, the first day. In Hebrew, Ve'yehi Erev, Ve'yehi Woker, Yom Echad. Yom means day, Erev means evening, Boker means morning. From this passage, we can see that a day in the rabbinic Hebrew calendar runs from sunset, the start of the evening, to the next sunset. The same definition appears in the Bible in Leviticus 23.32, where the holiday for Yom Kippur or Day of Atonement is defined as lasting from evening to evening, when three stars are visible in the sky. In this diagram, we can see that from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the evening watch that begins the new day. Then from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight is the midnight watch. Then from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. is the Kakro watch. And from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the morning watch. In the morning, 6 a.m. is the sunrise. 9 a.m. is the third hour. 12 noon is the sixth hour. 3 p.m. is the ninth hour. And 6 p.m. is the twelfth hour, the beginning of another new day. In Judaism, an hour is defined as one twelfth of the time from sunrise to sunset, so an hour can be less than 60 minutes in winter and more than 60 minutes in summer. This proportional hour is known as Sha'azimanit, literally a time-related hour. The next lesson is names of weekdays. The Hebrew week, Shabuwa, is a cycle of seven days, mirroring the seven-day period of the book of Genesis in which the world is created. The names for the days of the week are simply the day number within the week. Yom Rishon, first day, corresponds to Sunday. Yom Shani, second day or Monday. Yom Shlishi, third day, Tuesday. Rom Ravi'i, fourth day, Wednesday. Yom Kamishi, fifth day, Thursday. Yom Shishi, 6th day, Friday, and Yom Shabbat, rest day, Saturday. Why the days don't have names? Sabbath is the destination, the goal of all the other days of the week. Every day is viewed as a preparation for and a means to a greater day, the Sabbath. 
Jews don't rest in order to work, but work in order to have a day of rest and resolve themselves and the rest of the world. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Exodus 20, 9-10 The second main lesson is the Jewish holidays. Jewish holidays are special days in the Jewish calendar which celebrate moments in Jewish history as well as central themes in the relationship between God and the world, such as creation, revelation, and redemption. The first holiday is Sabbath or Shabbat in Hebrew. Sabbath is the weekly day of rest lasting from shortly before sundown on Friday night to nightfall on Saturday night commemorates God's day of rest after six days of creation. It plays a pivotal role in Jewish practice and is governed by a large corpus of religious law. The Bible reference is Genesis 2, 1-3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had done. At sundown on Friday, the woman at the house welcomes the Sabbath by lighting two or more candles and reciting a blessing. The evening meal begins with a kiddush, a blessing recited aloud over a cup of wine, and the blessing recited over the bread called motzi. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. During the Sabbath, Jews are forbidden to engage in any activity like lighting a fire, writing, using money, and carrying in the public domain. In modern time includes driving a car, which involves burning fuel and using electricity. B. The second classification of holiday is what we call the Three Pilgrimage Festivals. These three major festivals, Passover or Pesach, Weeks or Pentecost, Shavuot in Hebrew, and Tabernacles, Sukkot in Hebrew, are called Regalim, derived from the Hebrew word Regal or Foot. On the tree of Regalim, it was customary for Israelites to make pilgrimage to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices in the temple. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which He chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Tabernacles, Deuteronomy 16.16 A. The first feast is the Passover. Passover or Pesach is the spring festival, a week-long holiday beginning in the evening of the 14th day of Nisan, the first month in Hebrew Bible calendar which corresponds to March or April, that commemorates the exodus from Egypt. It is the only holiday that centers on home service or the seder. Leaven products, called kamets, are removed from the house prior to the holiday and are not consumed throughout the week. Homes are thoroughly cleaned to ensure no bread or bread byproducts remain, and a symbolic burning of the last vestiges of kamets is conducted on the morning of the seder. Matza is eaten instead of bread. The Passover story tells that God passed over the homes of the innocent to destroy only the wicked. It teaches that there comes a time of reckoning, and God separates the good from the bad. The Passover lamb is important and was one of the Egyptian gods in the time of Moses. In order to be saved, Jews had to slaughter, renounce the way of life and the religion of those among whom they live. On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, shall kill it at twilight. Exodus 12, 1-6 During the evening meal called Seder, one of the rituals is the recitation of the ten plagues. Wherever the reader mentioned one of the plagues, Jews are required to spill a drop of wine from the cup before them. The reason? Although the Egyptians were enemies, the Jews cannot totally rejoice like the cup that is not full because their freedom came at the price of the suffering of their enemy, the Egyptians.
B. Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, Shavuot in Hebrew. Pentecost celebrates the revelation of the Torah to the Israelites on Mount Sinai, 50 days after the children of Israel departed from Egypt. It is a revelation of God himself to the Israelites and God's giving of Ten Commandments, a freedom from Egyptian slavery and freedom to be God's chosen people. It commemorates the day the Jews received the law of God and were taught that true freedom means being true to be yourself, to be happy, and to be holy. Pentecost is also known as the Festival of First Fruit, or Bikurim in Hebrew, that coincides in the biblical times with the wheat harvest. The Book of Ruth is being read at the synagogue services, and they decorated homes and synagogues with greenery and wearing white clothing symbolizing purity. Shavuot customs include all-night study of Jewish religious books. They eat dairy foods like cheesecakes, eggs, burekas, and blintzes, our special favorites, the fruit of the earth. And the third pilgrimage festival is the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot. Tabernacles or the Festival of Booths commemorates the Israelites' 40 years of wandering through the desert on their way to the Promised Land. How can anyone survive for so long in the face of impossible odds? Jews miraculously made it through the desert because of God's special care. During those 40 years, right after receiving the Torah, God fed the Jews with bread from heaven called manna. Also, God protected them from the harsh sun on the day and chill wind at night, so that pillar of clouds follow them day and night wherever they travel. Jews has to remember this miracle. Instead of just talking about it though, they go one step further by reenacting it for eight days. It is celebrated through the construction of temporary booth or tabernacle, sukkah in Hebrew or sukkot in plural that represents the temporary shelters of the Israelites during their wandering. Jews not only eat but also sleep in the sukkah, which make them realize that their ultimate protection comes from God. The book of Ecclesiastes is being read at the synagogue services. As they celebrate the feast, they celebrate it with the four species, symbolic of the Jewish people. 1. Etrog or Lemon refers to the hearts of the Jews, the place of understanding and wisdom. 2. Palm leaves or lulav refers to the backbone of the Jews, uprightness. 3. Myrtle, kadasim, corresponds to the eyes of the Jews, enlightenment. And 4. Willow, a robot branch, represents the lips of the Jews, the service of the lips to prayer and worship of God. Sukkot is the holiday that represents the symbol of happiness. The feast reminded the Jews that possessions like money and good shelters are not what makes people happy, but a conversation with God. Sukkot concludes with Simkat Torah, means the day of rejoicing with the Torah, a holiday which marks reaching the end of the Torah reading cycle and beginning all over again. To summarize, We've seen that the three pilgrimage festivals each have a major theme. Passover represents freedom. Shavuot is revelation, the time of the giving of Torah. Sukkot is divine providence and miraculous survival. Aside from the pilgrimage festivals, there is also High Holidays. High Holidays in Judaism, Yamim Noraim, may mean the holidays from Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, to Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, by extension, the period of 10 days including those holidays known also as the 10 days of repentance. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. It coincides with day of sounding the shofar or Yom Teruah in Hebrew, marks the beginning of the 10-day period of atonement leading up to Day of Atonement. During this period, Jews are commanded to search their souls and make amends for sins committed throughout the year. Holiday customs include blowing the shofar or trumpet in the synagogue, eating apples and honey, 
and saying blessing over a variety of symbolic foods such as pomegranates. Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur in Hebrew is the holiest day of the Jewish year, the Sabbath of Sabbaths. It is a day of communal fasting and praying for forgiveness for one's sin. Observant Jews spend the entire day in the synagogue reciting prayers from a special holiday prayer book called a Maxor, wearing white cloth. Jews believe that God inscribed each person's fate for the coming year in the Book of Life on Rosh Hashanah and waits until Yom Kippur to seal the verdict. During the days of awe or repentance, a Jew tries to amend their behavior and seek forgiveness for wrong done against God and against other human beings. There are holidays that were not mentioned in the Torah but became part of the history and victory of the Jewish people. They are called the other holidays like Purim and Hanukkah. Purim, or Lutz in English, is a joyous Jewish holiday that commemorates the deliverance of the Persian Jews from the plot of the evil Haman, who sought to exterminate them, as recorded in the biblical Megillat Esther. It is characterized by public recitation of the Book of Esther, mutual gifts of food and drinks, charity to the poor, and the celebratory meal, as mentioned in Esther chapter 9, 22. Other customs include drinking wine, eating special pastries, dressing up in masks and costumes, and organizing carnivals and parties. Purim has celebrated annually on the 14th of the Hebrew month of Adar, which occurs in February or March of the Gregorian calendar. The next one is Hanukkah, or dedication in English also known as the Festival of Lights. It is an eight-day Jewish holiday that starts on the 25th day of Kislev, which occurs in December or January of the Gregorian calendar. This holiday marks the rededication of the temple after its desecration by Antiochus IV Epiphanes. Spiritually, Hanukkah commemorates the miracle of the oil. It is a victory of the Maccabees over Syrian Seleucid Empire when there was only enough consecrated oil to fuel the eternal flame in the temple for one day. Miraculously, the oil burned for eight days, which was the length of time it took to press, prepare, and consecrate new oil. Tisha V'Av is another special holiday, a Jewish fast day commemorating several tragedies the Jewish people have endured, including the destruction of the first and second temples. Tisha is number nine, or the ninth day of the month of Av, corresponding to July or August of the Gregorian calendar. Since the two temples were destroyed on the same calendar day, Av 9, tradition has assigned a gloom to this day. The Book of Lamentation 1.3 says, Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, and because of great servitude, she dwells among the heathens. Jews kept a total fast, sit on the floor, recite prayers of mourning, and read the Book of Lamentation. Lastly, there are modern holidays that the Jewish people celebrate and became part of their history, and they are as follows. One, Holocaust Memorial Day or Yom HaShoah is celebrated on the 27th day of Nisan, March or April, that commemorates the Holocaust by recalling an attempt of German leader Adolf Hitler to massacre most of the Jews in Europe during the Second World War. Second, Israel's Independence Day, Yom HaAtzmaut, on the 5th of Iyar in the Jewish calendar. April or May. It commemorates the declaration of Israel's statehood on May 14, 1948 from the British Mandate. And third, Jerusalem Day, Yom Yerushalayim, came into being in the aftermath of the 1967 Six-Day War when Israel liberated the old city of Jerusalem from Jordan and Palestine. It is celebrated on the 28th of Iyar, April, May, the Hebrew date on which the divided city of Jerusalem became one. One of the themes of Jerusalem Day, based on the verse from Psalm 122.3 that says, Build up! Jerusalem is like a city that was joined together.
To summarize, the first holiday is the weekly Sabbath or Shabbat, then the three pilgrimage festival, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, concluded by Simchat Torah. Then High Holidays, Rosh Hashanah, and Day of Atonement. Then other holidays, Purim, Hanukkah, and Tisha B'Av. And the modern day holidays are Holocaust Memorial Day, Israel's Independence Day, and Jerusalem Day. Thank you for being here. Be safe always, write your comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Baruch Hashem. God bless you.